Today we are going to upgrade the web scraper app that I built for Facebook. Let's get started. So before I dive into the code, I'm just going to show you the post that I'm going to use for my example. And again, I'm going to use Bristol Waste Company, where you can see this post has been posted recently and it's got a bunch of comments, it got shares, it got likes and it got content in its post. And I'm going to extract that all using my Facebook web scraper. The post ID I've put in here as a comment. So the first thing I need to do is go and initialize my bot and I'm just going to call it bot that equals my Facebook bot and I'm going to initialize that so after I've initiated it I'm going to give it the post ID that I'm going to use as an example so we're going to say bot dot post ID and that equals the string value here and then once I've fit it we can go down the list of all the things that this bot can do so we can say print and then we can say bot you can see the first one there is post content so if we run that we see there is the post content. We know it doesn't feel like a normal bank holiday weekend. And if we go back to the post, you can see we know that it doesn't feel like a normal bank holiday weekend. So the post comments has been scraped successfully. Next is bot dot post I post likes. If we run that, this is all the people that's liked the post. So that is successful as well. And then we can go and scrape all the names of the people who shared it and there's just one person kate alves this little string i still can't get rid of but it will have to tag along for now and then lastly it can also check for the date posted the first one i missed that and if we print that one out you can see that it has been posted on may the 7th at 4 33 pm so that is everything that this bot can do now the way i went about doing it is i still use beautiful soup for the web scraping i also created a file called secrets.py with my username and password for my facebook account and then i store it inside this payload variable after i've imported the necessary packages i then create a class called facebook bot and i give it few variables that i'm going to use throughout my different functions that is the login basic url which is mbasic.facebook.com and then we get the mobile url which is just the m.facebook.com the mobile url is used for getting the names of people who've shared the post versus the other url is used for all the other web scraping activities then the payload variable just contains your username and password and then i've just put in an empty string for the post id so you need to go and give that post id as soon as you've initiated the bot and then for each action of my bot i have created a function so you can see here is a function for parch html which just handles getting the html from the website and then the first one here is our post content now you can see the request url is the url that usually has the post content if you go to this url you will get the content of the post and here is the post id self .post ID will give it the value that we've given that variable at the top and then soup equals beautiful soup soup self.parse html here i call my function which goes and takes all the html data from the website logs in and everything does all that stuff that's necessary before you can get access to the facebook html for that post and i give it the request url for getting to the post url and then i just iterate through it correct get the content of the post and in this case the content of the post in question is enclosed in p html tag so there's a little p tag that usually does that has the post content in it. So I just tell beautiful soup that you need to go and look for that and then i give it all to the post content variable now you can see here at the end i sort of say join all the different post content now if there is line breaks in the content of the post it puts it in a different line or a different and a separate list entry so if you want each line of the post content to be in a separate list entry then you can just comment this out but if you want the post content to be in one list entry then you need to use this. So that returns my post content here at the bottom. The next is the post likes. I've put a limit of 200. If the post that you're scraping is more popular there and there's thousands of people that's liked it, then you just need to go and change that value to a thousand and up. And then the request URL is the URL where all the names of the people who've liked it are listed. And then I follow the same recipe of calling beautiful soup and I pass the HTML using this function here to log into Facebook, copy over all the HTML data and give it to beautiful soup. And in 
this case, the people, the names of the people who've liked the post is enclosed in the H3 HTML tag. And then again, I go and I loop through all these names and I put it in a variable people who liked, which I then send back if you call this function. And then lastly, for the post shares, this is a bit different. This time I log in to Facebook for the inside the function itself because I'm using a different login URL. You can see there's the login mobile URL, which is m.facebook.com versus the rest is the mbasic.facebook.com. So I can't use my function parse HTML in this case because it is using the basic URL. And then after I've logged in again and I've, I've copied over all the HTML data for the people who have shared the names of the people who've shared the post. I go through the same recipe and you can see in this case, the names of the people who've shared the post is enclosed in the span HTML tag. And then I iterate through the total list of people and I put it in a list called people who shared and I return that.